Imperion Galactic Survival is a hidden gem of a game that I love because it allows the player a nearly endless amount of creative freedom in a space survival environment. But at this time, more than something like space engineers, you can do stuff with those creations like make a home on a nice alien planet, explore, mine, gather resources, fight through infested ruins, fight against evil Xerax, legacy or pirate starships, etc. So naturally, people have created amazing replicas of classic sci-fi ships and vehicles, many of which can be found in the form of blueprints on the Steam Workshop, downloaded and spawned into your game once you have gathered the required resources. Or you can modify or test out these creations in the creative gameplay mode, which is what I am about to show you with some Star Trek replicas here. Now the question is, in a game that simulates, to some degree, real physics when it comes to gravity, inertia, thrust, and other things, do Star Trek ships work? In fact, one might argue that Star Wars ships, the bigger ones, work a little better because they're a little less extravagant in their design. But Star Trek ships are cool, more like works of art. So then in this game that simulates some physics, does form follow function, or are these ships non-functional replicas? Let's go over it. First, let me show you a non-Star Trek ship that is a functional design like many in Imperion and kind of cool, which is my own Osprey class rapid response Corvette, which I'm sure I will upload to Steam at some point in the future, along with my Penguin class Scout. But we need to define what is functional and practical. It's functional because it can power everything it's running without overloading the CPU or generators. This includes the thrusters, which are placed strategically around the ship, shields, weapons, and other devices. It's practical because the thrusters are arranged in a way that makes it able to fly in almost any environment, save extremely high-G planets. It has empty spaces for future upgrades both in the interior and exterior of the ship. It has a vehicle or hangar bay on the bottom, but also the med bay is on the lower hangar deck for extremely convenient treatment of injuries. Last but not least, you don't have to traverse endless corridors, doors, and airlocks to get from one end of the ship to the other. I don't know why in sci-fi it got into people's heads that the interior of a spaceship must consist of an extravagant maze of corridors and bulkheads. The first ship we look at is more of an art piece that is not functional, and that is this classic old series, Enterprise. But I'm using a fairly functional shuttlecraft that I found on the Steam Workshop to approach this Enterprise through the shuttle bay. And I must say, based on how this bay is laid out, it's not too bad. The door is a bit small, but you'll notice it's pretty dark in here. For some reason, the lights weren't on, which I turned on via the ship's control panel. But it's still a bit too dark. It could be that the blueprint for this ship is pretty old, when the environment engine for this game had less dynamic light features, so the lights in this hangar definitely need to be increased in power and arrangement. In creative mode, you can cheat a bit by changing the time of day. But in space, this still might not be enough illumination. But overall, this Enterprise replica, although not a bad facsimile from the exterior, is pretty bare bones. And perhaps with almost any Star Trek ship, the interior is hard to travel through. It takes a while to find the bridge. Now, does it fly or function? Well, as you see from the earlier activation of the control panel, this ship does not have enough computer cores to have anywhere near the requirements to fly it. After seeing the unimpressive interior, I actually got bored of this pretty quickly and moved on to another ship to explore. Now there are hundreds of ships like this on the Steam Workshop, meaning they are just pretty much a demo hull, not a working ship. In fact, this huge Derridex class warbird here is similar, only it is on a different level when it comes to the design quality. I mean, given the limitations of voxel building, this Tadaridix is laid out much better, while it is true it does have endless corridors inside. The same is true of this Galaxy class, which is laid out even better in the interior, but due to the CPU requirements here again, this is mostly just a demo hull or an art piece, but not really functional. Perhaps it could be made to be functional. I was almost certain that this little Defiant class here, which is small, so it should be easy to do, would be functional. But it isn't really. I could find no way to get into the interior of this Defiant, and the interior is very, very basic. I could see a Defiant design to be very functional in the Imperion universe, 
if someone who has a good understanding of the game mechanics is willing to put the work into designing one. Now, some of these ships could be made to be functional, but in the case of something like the Galaxy class and the Dideridix Warbird, it would take quite an effort, and while in the actual game, it would take a small group just to run the things. No one person or even three-man team needs a ship design meant for hundreds of crew. Although NPC crew is a thing, in this game, they do help reduce the CPU requirements of your ship if you can acquire them in the game. So let's get to a ship that actually works. I was delighted to find that this Voyager here is not only laid out extremely well, but it works in every way. And there are a few other Voyagers out there that don't work. But this ship has adequate power generation and CPU to run shields, weapons, and engines. Its interior is laid out very well and very close to the design of the real Voyager. It has adequate accessibility all throughout the ship and even though there are many decks and corridors, it has adequate signage everywhere that tells you where you are so that you're never lost inside this ship. The designer of this ship is clearly a Voyager fan. And does it work? Oh you bet! At least in the vanilla unmodded version of the game, but I have not yet tried it in a popular mod such as Reforged Eden. Its weapons are functional, it can maneuver adequately, and when it lands it's very much like the real Voyager. Let's look at another ship that is even more functional. This ship is not in Star Trek canon anywhere, but it is still in the style of Star Trek and called the Riemann Redhawk, which is a beautiful corvette or frigate sized starship with impeccable raptor aesthetics. The interior is compact but very functional with everything one needs within a few seconds walk. Also notice how maneuverable it is. This is due to the thruster layout. This game has taught me to be a big fan of outboard nacelles that house most of your thrusters. Due to the torque of this thruster arrangement, a ship like this can be very maneuverable. And clearly this ship is designed for direct attack, as most of its weapons are fixed mounted forward with only a flak turret and a laser turret, but this ship could get away with that because of its maneuverability. Now onto a ship that is damn cool but not quite functional, but could be made to work, and that is this amazing bird of prey replica. First, the aesthetics of this thing are extremely accurate. Someone went through a great deal of effort to make this look like some kind of authentic Klingon bird of prey. So the interior must be bare bones and ugly, right? Well, no, not at all. I mean, look at this bridge. This looks like a real Klingon bridge. That's not easy to replicate. So the layout of the interior must be untraversable, right? No, not at all. It doesn't have hardly any corridors to get lost in. It's all open and functional. In the back there is a massive hangar for probably multiple vehicles. And the rest is all purely utilitarian and clean on through and through. Now this blueprint does suffer from CPU issues, but if it gets airborne, it's as maneuverable as anything. And while it definitely has more weapons it has a right to have, the weapons layout is pretty good. This is one that I'll keep just for the fun of it. To make it functional to even spawn into a real game, you'd have to take off many if not most of the weapons and then add CPU cores later to get all the weapons functioning. But before it's really combat ready, it would make a fine mid-game vessel for any number of roles. Alright, we're going to end with the maestro of Imperion Designers. The Kut Luk Bird of Prey by the great Jeff Randall. I mean look at this thing. This looks like it's not just another Imperion ship made out of blocks, but a real Star Trek ship. It has that predatory Klingon aesthetic, bristling with weapons. As you can see, as you can see, this double ramp on the back makes it easy to board. As soon as you walk into this area, the pragmatism jumps out at you with the med healing chamber, armor locker, and O2 station, all right there. I'll look at the control panel to see if everything is in order, and what? You're short on CPU? Also, I found later that the generators are missing, but uh, Jeff, of all people, but the ship is advertised as a Reforged Eden ship, meaning it's meant for the Reforged Eden mod, which has slightly more challenging but fun ship design elements in my opinion. And there I found it does have a generator alright. It's a damped fusion reactor. This would normally be on ships that are much larger, but hey, this ship is actually pretty big once you start running around the interior. And what is great about this is that it has little guides here and there, recommendations about how to outfit this ship. A blueprint like this is not really meant to be functional right out of the box. 
It's more of a recommendation of optimizations. Just like any blueprint, you should spawn it in creative mode yourself after downloading it and make modifications that suit your needs or take off items so that you can actually spawn it into your game and then acquire the recommended optimizations later. What is also nice about this design is he's left many open slots all over the interior for various upgrades such as shield capacitors and such, which exist in the Reforged Eden mod. Does it fly? Why, yes it flies. And it lands. And it has spotlights. And this is definitely one of my favorites that I'm going to keep, if nothing else for a study on how to design a very nice ship. So in closing, yes, Star Trek ships can work in this game. Now is it easy to make perfect replicas that work? No, not at all, but they can work. It may be easier to make a new Star Trek design of your own, kind of like the Red Hawk, one suited for this game environment, instead of a perfect replica of, say, an Enterprise or a Dideridex or a Galore class. Now I have to admit, there are a lot more blueprints out there on Steam that may be amazing and I didn't have time to test, or I simply may be unaware of some that are really good. So if you know of any really good Star Trek blueprints that work, please mention them in the comments. Well, thanks for watching everyone, and just an update, I am making progress on the upcoming video about the Red Star Destroyer, which some of you know of as the Errant Venture, the Star Destroyer that was captured and run as a smuggling base by Booster Tarek. I will be posting progress on that in the community section of my channel, and you'll get updates on that if you subscribe to the channel. My hope is to have that video out by Friday, but I will likely have to resort to nosebleeding levels of work to get it out on time, so no guarantees. But subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified, of course. But also tell me in the comments which Star Trek ship you'd prefer to use in an environment such as Imperion. What do you think would be the most functional and practical? Until next time, space friends.